the live. Oh, we're going live now. Okay. Yes. All righty. Come on in. Say hello to Martina. Martina, um, people are going to come in now, and Zena's going live on Facebook, so we know we're live on okay. Facebook as well. Right. So just tell us a little bit before we get started, right? What part of this wonderful world you're based out of? I'm based in Vekre. It's uh, it's a mid-sized town, but close to 100,000 um, in the, not way south, but in the southern part of Sweden. So okay. uh, pretty good. Nice connections to both Stockholm and, you know, Denmark, Copenhagen, flying out of Copenhagen. So it's pretty convenient. All right. And, and how are things in Sweden right now? Like, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Work-wise, it's going well. And uh, we have some nice weather. Uh, last few days thank god it's been warm and lovely so everybody's turning out happy about that very good very good so guys now that you're joining us uh ron big hello to you da ron's joined us martina all the way from dallas and texas so good to see see you ron so guys tell us in the chat just make sure you are talking to host and panelists and if you have any questions as we go through um that you have for Martina as we go through this this interview just 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 put them in the chat and we'll deal with them so Martina I'm going to go backwards right so I want to okay. go all the way back to when you were a little girl and you realized that you wanted to be an artist right just talk to us about that uh, about that always wanting to be an artist uh, well um, as a kid I I loved to draw and sketch and do paintings, and I did it quite a lot. My mom had some real talent, and I wanted to be like her, and I, I did a lot of paintings, and I was also writing, but the paintings and, and the drawing was uh, a, a big part of my life. And uh, growing up in school, I kept on doing that, and just as I was finishing high school, um, we had you know art as a class, and uh, I remember to go into my teacher with my for to get my final grade, and he was going to look through my portfolio, and mine was like three th three times bigger, uh, thicker than everybody else's because I put some extra work in there because I wanted him to see it. And he flipped through it and he sat silent through the whole thing. And when he was finished, he closed the book and he said, "Well, Martina, I believe you are my student with the most ambition and the least talent." <laughs> wow okay <laughs> that's what I got and I was like oh okay um but at the same time I was on my way to United States to be an au pair a nanny and as I graduated my parents gave me a camera for a graduation present and that was one of those early uh, that with a self-timer that you can take you know and of course with film this is about 30 years ago a little bit more. Um, and you're not I'm... that old. Go away. You're only joking. <laughs> yes, I am. Well. Oh my God. <laughs> and so, anyway, I came to the States, to California, to a beautiful place I lived in. And I took so many pictures. I, and I realized I, this is, of course, I've been analyzing this, you know, going through life, but I realized early that I did not want to take pictures of dead things. I wanted to put somebody in there. So, either I had the hugest ego uh, or I just wanted a person in there because I had that self timer on and I jumped in front of it and I was posing and I was putting myself in all these positions and I was you know just getting on with my friends and telling them how to pose and everything so it sort of started there as an 18 year old and I came home for my first year with like uh, 10 albums of pictures after one year in California then I went back to California as a nanny and um, then I didn't want to be a nanny anymore. And I decided I need to go to school to stay in California. And then I had to so really analyze myself. What can I do? What am I good at? Because I wanted a profession. I wanted something to pay the bills. I just don't want to take school classes and just spend money. I wanted something real to, um, to have to hold on to. So I looked into photography and I realized that I'm a pretty decent photographer even if it was like with with the date stamp on my pictures and in very uh, casual images but I I went to school and I found my home there I realized that I was I, I could make my pictures um, with the camera because I do not have I don't have the talent of making pictures with my hands with paintings and even when I when I cut my backdrops I cannot cut it in a straight line because I'm literally I it's not in me. <laughs> so the camera was my way to start making pictures. Okay. And, and 
your love for art, okay, so that, that you learned as, uh, as a child and, you know, you did all that artwork, does that help you today in your photography? Does it, how does that feed into your photography? Well, it, when, I, when I went back home after finishing school uh, of photography and I went back home and I started my studio, it was sort of like on a, on a whim, I have to say, because I thought I was going to be home in my town in Sweden for maybe like a year and then go back to the States. So when I saw this studio place that was available, I, I figured that I could have a studio for a year, make some money um, and then go back. And I told my dad and my mom and, and my dad was like, well, you can't just open a studio if you don't have any clients. And I was like, I don't get any clients if I don't have a studio. So <laughs> and that way it was, we opened up and it's actually this fall coming up, it's 25 years ago, I opened up that studio. And I've been full time ever since. And so in the beginning I was shooting everything. Well, not products. I mean, I knew early, early on that I was a people photographer but I was shooting weddings and babies and families and <clears throat> commercial work as well. And that was kind of fresh idea uh, at that time, because in my town, you were either a portrait photographer or a commercial photographer. And I just came in and I say, well, I'm a people photographer, so why can't I do both? And that was quite different. So I had my portraits was had sort of a commercial feel to it. And in the commercial business, I was really good at handling people. Uh, like in industries or with products, whatever. So I, my business really took off quite quickly because there was a niche there that I just happened to fall into, which was very successful. Um, but then uh, many, many years later, um, when I, I think it was a little bit after the digital revolution that I decided that I want something that's very special to me that, that nobody can really copy because by that time, so many people were pretty decent with their cameras, you know, the digital cameras. And I figured that I need to find something that's just for me. And then I started looking around, what kind of style do I like that's out there? And I started doing research of what's, what's you know, speaking to me. And I found these, these, it was not in Sweden back then, but I found it internationally where I can follow people and study the way they shot their images. And I started to develop my, art portraits it's probably five or six years ago now and at that time nobody knew what they were that there was actually a business for it so I had to really produce a lot of uh, images and a lot of personal projects to sort of convince people that this is something you can buy and you can make for yourself so that's what I've been doing the last few years just perfecting that business part of my art portraits Okay, Martina. So I'd love to deep dive into that if we could a little bit. So it, it's a fascinating journey. And, and what I love is that, you know, you started out as, if I take a medical term as a GP, right? And now mm -hmm. you're a surgeon, right? You, you're, yeah. you're specializing in a certain area. So, but I'd love to just explore how you went about that journey in terms of discovering, you know, who was your ideal client? and what you wanted your photographic art to do for them. So can you talk to us a little bit about that road to discovery? Like, why did you decide to go that route rather than going the commercial route or the newborn route? You know, what, what did that look like? Well, actually, just to touch upon the newborns, I think that I was on onto the newborns as well at the same time, because I believe that they have that, um, the styling and, and the artsy look of it. But to be honest, I wasn't that great at it, especially if not if the baby weren't really, um, well, I can't say well behaved because they're babies, but, but if it wasn't going that great, I can feel myself not delivering the, the, the quality and the level of work that I wanted to deliver to my people, my clients. So I decided just a couple of years ago that I wanted to fade out the newborns because I, I didn't feel like I wanted to master it. I could have, but I, it wasn't for me. So I faded that out and I just concentrate on, you know, from eight years and up. Um, but that was a newborn part. When this first started, I think that the style attracted me first. And I just wanted to shoot in that style. And I had, I had been close to it. I had, it has been like um, a feel of that in, in my, uh, in some of my 
portraits before. I just started to develop it. And in the beginning, to be honest, I had no idea what I was doing. And when I was creating, everything was taking so much time and I can get lost in, in the creation and the photo shoot and, and all the props and, and I was buying flowers and I, I could not um, find a way in the beginning to make this sellable because, you know, time is money and I have to sort of package everything so I can produce something creative, but it has to be done in a certain amount of time so I can make it, you know, profitable as well as uh, fun and interesting for me. And that took, that took some time to, to reach that point. And I, I took my my movements and and my development was in, in, in step by step pretty small steps um just trying out different things trying out different packages i failed so many times <laughs> i i i can oh my god i can talk about failure and mistakes all day long um but i never you know failure or mistakes whatever you want to call them has never bothered me that much because i do believe that if somebody else has done it before, if somebody, so why cannot I do it? I mean, of course, it's just a matter of finding out the way, setting goals, and just working at it small times, you know? Um, from, yeah, go ahead. So I think, Martina, well, the, I've heard a couple of, so many great suggestions and just what you, you first said, right? So I want to go back just about a minute and a half where you talked about your journey from newborn photography and fading that out. Now, fading out is a really important word for me and um, because often I see photographers saying, I don't want to do that anymore. They stop tomorrow, right, um, to do the new thing. But of course, they need that business to transition. So for you, was that the same? Was For you, was it that you knew you needed to fade it out, but it had to be a planning process to get to where you wanted to? It's definitely a planning process, but I think it was not super well thought out. It was a feeling that I had inside that I wasn't happy when I was doing it. When I came home after a newborn session, I wasn't happy. When I come home now after my fine art, I'm, I'm literally on a high uh, most of the time. So um, I knew that something wasn't sitting right with me. So it was um, a lot of thinking about it and I kept it going even if I had in my mind been thinking about, I need to quit this, I kept it going just to make really sure. And at the same time, building um, the other business. But of course, I've always had my eggs in not just one basket. So I, I still do commercial headshots. I still do corporate work. Um, I don't do a lot of commercial work like advertising because we don't have that much in this area. And like for, I guess for many photographers that, advertisement agencies, stuff like that, they do have a lot of in-house productions. So um, that sort of just naturally faded out. Uh, and I, my weddings, I was still doing my weddings because that's a, that's a good income. But the same thing with that, I wasn't really happy. I love that people are dressed up and, and beautiful and all of that. And I could be creative for a small part of the day, but it was always very stressful and so many shots that you have to make you you have like you have this list that you cannot miss and i have noticed about myself that i work best if i can be a free creator so i had to find a way to to make that my my everyday life that i can be more of a um, free spirit when it comes to creativity and weddings weren't that for me so when actually i think it was probably the pandemic um, that when everything just slowed down, because I remember when 2020 hit and I had, you know, all the weddings got canceled. I do believe that I had been sort of backing out a little bit. I only had like three or four full day weddings booked that year and they went out the way. And, and I decided when everything was gone, I did a couple of, you know, like two hours during the day, the smaller ones that popped up uh, later on during the pandemic. But since that sort of automatically went out the window, I decided not to go back to it. And the same with newborns, I, it was a time for me to, to start thinking about. So I just decided not to. And last year in January, 2021, I sort of revamped my business and I came across some fabulous product that I started using. Start with 3XM, I don't know. <laughs> and- Who are they? 
<laughs> there was there was there was so many things that I that I that I just freshly I I, I rebranded my web page and I redid a lot of things and by that time I decided to uh, not do the traditional newborns but I do have clients that comes back um, that have their second and third child and they want to do the same thing and I have been pretty strict with saying that I don't do the traditional ones but I offer this instead so I do like a mommy and me, daddy and me session with the newborn if they like to. And that way I sell in like a whole fine art session. And they will also get a few images of the baby alone, but more of the easy ones like in a basket or something like that. So that session has been quite popular. And I also have great colleagues pretty close to this town. So I can refer them to some amazing photographers that I know will do my clients well um, if I can refer them to them so so Mart Martina I have a question around that okay so the newborns just for quite often I see um and yes you've a certain newborn style where it's just a newborn and they're in a basket or you know all, all that photography but quite often I see that newborn photographers who get those photographs of baby with dad right that mum wants to buy that she may not yeah. know she wants it she thinks she wants the frog pose and all that stuff but when she actually sees those images of her partner holding that baby that she wants that have you seen that in your business yeah 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 it's amazing and the the more i sort of have um um tightened my uh, my packages and how i sell them um, and when, uh, it's hard to use the word sell because it sometimes has a negative sound to it, but it is a part of selling. But how I present the session and how I want them to know how I build it up, I, I jokingly tell them during the consultation that, oh, we want to take pictures of you and the baby and then dad and the baby. And believe me, you will love this. And just prepare yourself. Look at my product sheet because you're going to want them all, you know, and that's my job. I'm just going to make great images and you want to buy them all. So I sort of prepare them for that. But like you said, there's not so many people that actually realize how emotional they get when they see those images. Because the baby's in the baskets and the baby's naked and the baby's on the on the pillow. And that's beautiful. And that's but it's more of a, I don't know, it's it's not as personal um, as when you get to hold the baby. You can still make it fine art feeling to those images, um, just more of a connection with the family. So Martina, I want to just deep dive into your offerings, right? Because you've mentioned fine art a lot, right? But you also offer classical and you offer mm -hmm. branding and you offer headshots, right? Yes. So so can we just talk about your definition of the difference, say, between a fine art portrait and a classical portrait? Sure. Um, I, I have, when they ask me for portraits, I give them two options. There is either the classical and that's like a 45 minute session. They come in prepared. Uh, we do have a phone conversation, a phone consultation before. We talk about colors and I send them sometimes some links to clothing and I explain that it's important that they sort of in harmony and what they wear. So I prep them pretty good, even if it's just a 45 minute um, uh, session. And it's very suitable when you have the young kids, you have the one year olds, the two year olds, the three year olds, you have the whole family, you have older siblings, people don't want to be hanging around too long with the photographer, like teenage boys around 14, you know. <laughs> so my one of my selling points is like, I make it short, short and quick. <laughs> Just tell your son, he'd be in and out of here real quick. So, um, but, but for those sessions, I think it's quite suitable to keep it, keep it um, very short. And um, they um, have to, like I said, come prepared. And sometimes um, one of those sessions could turn into a fine art feel. Uh, I have that happen, you know, when the, the, the kids are just amazing, even if they're young and it, they sit still and I was like, oh, let's just put a book in his hand or whatever. And I can just spontaneously add some fine art feel to it. And then uh, in the edits, 
I'll just tweak it a little bit extra towards that fine art field. So for me, the classical images are not as retouched. They're not as edited as the fine art is. So we move into the fine art. Um, then we have a session we, where we, it's on about three to four hours and it's included styling with hair and makeup. And we also have an in-house consultation if they're able to make it to me or we do a Zoom consultation and they are, we're talking about clothing and they have plenty of dresses they can borrow and they bring some of their own. And we talk about, you wanna have flowers in your hair and with fine art, it is either like the magazine fashion sexy look or we do like a romantic old masters oil painting kind of look to it. So they get to be in that decision how we design their shoot and sometimes they choose both oh, i want this black dress i want to be a little bit sexier or underwear and then i would love to go with the the big tool dresses with some flowers in my hair and i don't mind the more images i produce the variations the more they hopefully buy at the end so martina how do you so let's say you get an inquiry for a client right how do you explain to them that these are the offerings for them to choose which they might like i'm fascinated about those inquiries that come in H how does your client make that decision is are they making it on a time decision are they making it on an investment decision or is it a different decision well, first of all it is it is if you have a two-year-old i do not recommend a fine art session we could um we could sell it as far as mom comes in and start the fine art session by herself and then bring in the two year old we've done that but that's very rare because they are usually in a situation where they just want images for grandma and grandpa it's not much so much for themselves always you know it's like they are more uh, focused on uh, more classical images more classical portraits so when i get those phone calls it's kind of easy to i i do present the other ones so it's oh if you want to we can do this session just for you you can come in you can get you know treated really well have the hair makeup on if you want to do that for just mommy and then the family comes that's how i sort of give them the option and i had that this uh, conversation this morning uh, with a client because her son is graduating and he's like 19 years old and she called me because she wants some graduation pictures and i was like oh great well we have these two options <laughs> and that's us we have the classical and uh, that way you can actually bring the whole family in and we can shoot the whole family and she has two boys and and her her and her husband and uh, at the end he just jumps into his graduation um clothes and with his hat on and everything like that and we finish up with some simple graduation images, but we get some family photos as well. And then I said, or we can do this, my fine art portraits. Have you seen my Instagram? And then I talk about it with the passion, the, 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 the heat in my voice, the, how I really feel about it. And I said, listen, like for mom, don't you, don't you want to like treat yourself and you can have this and we can do a couple of different portraits of you. And then they come in, we do the family and then we end up with a graduation picture. She was like, hmm, I never thought about that. I go, I know a lot of moms don't think about that because usually we always put, you know, the kids first and we think about we need to get this, but what about the family? And I tell them this, if you're investing time and money in to do these portraits, why not do that little extra bit? Because who knows when you're going to come back to the photographer? And she goes, you're right about that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, um, so Martina, can I just talk about marketing? So, you know, I'm a marketing nut. Okay. So, and marketing is about earning a conversation with a potential client. How do you earn those conversations that you've just described that you have with your clients? How do they come about? Yeah, uh, well, I do believe that, of course, my Instagram is is a source of them finding me, and I have only fine art images on there. I don't I don't show any classic portrait stuff. I show classic portrait stuff on my web page. Um, there's very obvious when you get on my web page, there's so obvious that I have the classic portraits. I don't, I don't scuff it to the back. I, I show it, but on my Instagram, it is very strict fine art. So a lot of followers, 
um, connect with me and, and order sessions through Instagram. And I also have my Facebook page. I, I'm not crazy about Facebook right now. Uh, I don't get the, the followings or the attractions that I, I want from Facebook, but I, I still use it. And um, I think I hit my local market a little bit better with Facebook and a bigger market with Instagram. And then since I've been in business so long, of course, I, I am kind of well known in, in this area. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about competition, maybe. But since I've been competing um, a, a few years now and gotten some great results, there's also been some some articles in the newspaper and people's like, oh, I read about you. And, and that way they, they think about me. And I also, when it is an article that is written, I always talk about my clients as well. Not just, oh, I won this award. Hey, I'm great. Way, hey, whatever. I do connect the, the process of entering competitions, how it makes me a better photographer, how it spills over to my business and for my portrait clients. And the great thing about that is I have also used quite a lot of my portrait clients in competitions and won some awards with client work, which is excellent for the branding and excellent for marketing because these clients are super happy. So they sharing, oh, look at my maternity picture, Martina won, blah, blah, blah. And then her friends. So word of mouth, but a lot of social media, of course. Okay, so let, let us just rewind that. I want to deep dive into that. There was so many great ideas there, Martina. So the first step is, I think what you've told us is that, you know, if you want a particular genre or style of photography, your Instagram should reflect just that. So there is no confusion. It's back to the surgeon idea. I mean, a brain surgeon, I'm not a, a GP. Um, so, so, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is, I love a lot of photographers enter competition and there's nothing wrong with that, right? But they're not client images or photographs that they've created or client art, right? So you've just explained their really key advantage of taking that approach is that um, it can become a PR engine for you. Because as you've just said, if you create a, a, a photographic art of actual clients, they're going to be excited that they've won this award too, right? They feel as if they're in collaboration to win that award mm -hmm. and therefore they spread the word. While if it was photographic competition, well, let me ask the question because I'm making an assumption. Don't make an assumption, Roland. <laughs> so, so I know that a lot of photographers, you know, if they want to push the creative boundaries a little bit, they will, you know, use a model or, or, or do that as well for that piece. And they can win awards as well. But have you, are you a believer in that you should enter competition images that, that have both? Absolutely. No. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I do both. Um, I, I take the opportunity to be creative with my clients when I feel we have the time and the client is up for it and we're having a great session. And you never, you never know. Um, sometimes in a client session that the images will turn out to be like competition worthy material and that has surprised me quite a few times uh, throughout especially last year because I was so focused on business that I decided to take a step back on competition and uh, not create so much because I didn't have the time I was selling boxes image boxes you know so <laughs> just kidding <laughs> now I was really focused on business so um I took a step back and so of course, when I, I was, I did want to, I wanted to enter, but I, I didn't put too much pressure on myself. So when I went through my materials as what can I bring to this competition, then I realized there were some client work that was pretty awesome. And um, I think I have always um, entered client work a certain amount of it. But last year was so obvious that because I didn't have a lot of new materials when it comes to that I created myself. And it did so well. Um, that I, I just loved it. And it spilled over a little bit to this year as well. And in London, it was awesome because there was a couple of actual client work there. Excellent. Because uh, in London, right, you swept the boards. Like it was <laughs> just, you know, next award, Martinez in the top three, you know, and you, you, you won so many of those as well. So, um, and a number of those, 
art images that you created, right? They were actually of clients as distinct yeah. from, okay. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there was actually the one image that, um, I don't know if there's one image to get me the port overall portrait, but the one that it showed when I won the overall portrait photographer of the year, that was a client image that was in entered into commission work. So um, I, I'm super grateful that I have come this this far in my business that so I get to to attract that type of client that are willing to experiment because they when they come into consultation they just want they just want the experience and they've seen my stuff on Instagram and they don't know what to expect and then we start creating and and when they go for my ideas because usually we don't we don't we can design their shoot at the consultation but I always tell them we're going to leave a little bit of option for spontaneous creativity. So if we get the feeling I'm going to run and get this and that and we're going to just create and they go oh, yeah that's fun. So we decide on clothing and colors and stuff, but the last finished a little bit of craziness is just mostly spontaneous. All right, I love that. So Martina, I have a question for you. I know I've never asked anybody this before, but I have been suggesting suggesting for many years, right? that the industry should consider having a print competition that is of client images as well as what currently happens right do you think that would be a good thing to do or a bad thing to do or maybe something that could be considered because i see you as a unicorn here right often often i see that the majority of photographic competition entries are not actually client work it's true. Um, I, for myself, I love the print competitions. I enter digital competitions as well. Uh, and some of them are really tough. And, and uh, I, I don't always do great because there is a lot of amazing photographers out there. But when it comes to print competition, there is something I have fallen in love with because it is the craft. It is the craft, the way we should, as a professional photographer, should serve our community. Um, I know people that are Instagram stars that sometimes enter a print competition, but they, they can't handle the print all the way to the print. So they don't do as well. Um, but for me, it's like, I need to be a, a great professional photographer and serve my clients. I need to set up the shoot, be creative, handle the light, be good at editing, and then produce a god darn it great image that can be printed well. <laughs> and then if you don't want to print yourself, I print my own work, but it's just because I'm probably I'm cheap. I don't want to spend too much money on fine art <laughs> prints. <laughs> I want to do it myself. No, but I print it. It's also satisfaction to, to see that coming out, to be able to handle the prints. Um, but that is what my clients go. So if I just send them images that are great digitally, but I don't know if it works on print, it, it is not a great service. So to, for that service to be great, it should be great from the beginning to the end, up on the wall. And um, for print competition, I believe that that trains you because that's what competition has been for me. It has trained me to be a better photographer in all areas as far as creativity, business-wise, um, editing, and of course, the printing. And I'm still learning. Oh my God, there's so much things that I still need to know and, and, and find out. So it's exciting, but it's a learning curve. So Martina, I know when you enter your competition, right, you're putting client images and you're putting um, your creative images that you spend time with that are non-client, right? So they yeah. didn't, the client didn't invest in them, right? They're for you right. to hone your art and all that. My question is, often I see in competition that the vast majority of images are not client images, right? right. They're not client art. Right. Do you, do you think that um, if there was a category of print competition, which were just for client work, do you think that would help um, elevate the importance of creating art that's not just about being better creativity yes. as, a, as a creator mm -hmm. but that they have to be also more investable 
as a client, that this client has actually commissioned this art, has physically gone and bought it. Do you think there's something in that or do you think that's just a crazy idea, Ron? No, it's not crazy. And, I, and I, there is um, the category, I know at least in, in London, it's in, in the Society of Photographers, that is uh, the commission work category. Okay. And okay. I, I remember that I had some I had some some portraits that were not super creative, but they were not client work. They were out of models or just like a test shoot of a person that it came out pretty nice, but they weren't, I didn't want to put them in creative portrait category. I didn't want to put them in illustration. It was like, what am I going to put them in? So I spoke to them at the competition and they said, you need to put them in open because if it's not commissioned, it, it can't be in commissioned uh, work. And um, that was one thing when I was listening to the judges, um, judge the jury, the live jury sessions um, at this convention. One of my images, the, the one that actually won quite a lot that they had a discussion, they said, one of the judges said, listen, this is actually commission work. And she had done this with a client. And it's, it's like, that was a big part of what brought that points, those points up because they realized, yeah, that this is actually client work. And so I think there is, at least in that competition, there's a category, but to spin off on what you said, it might be a great idea to have like a whole competition um, and that is just for um, commissioned work or professional work, because, you know, in some competition where you have um, your commercial categories that you actually have to submit like a bill like an invoice to show that this is this is commission uh, advertising work so i think that if if we can like do an extra competition to where print commission work actual client work both commercially or reportage magazine work that you actually will raise the professional standard with that. I absolutely believe so. Excellent. All right. So Martina, can we go back to the other parts of your business, right? So you've got the headshots and you've got the branding. Can you just explain to people the difference between a headshot offering and a branding offering? Sure. It's it's pretty much just almost the same basic setup as I have with my, my portraits. It's when you have a person calling up for a business portrait. I inquire a little bit what they need it for. And you can tell real soon in the conversation that, oh, I work with this company. We're going to put like a little image on the web page and it needs to be against a white backdrop, whatever. And I go, oh, that's a headshot. Welcome. Join me. <laughs> and it takes what, 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. They come in, we talk about, of course, I prep them and ask them about the, the clothing. And we do have a, fun, a conversation about uh, the companies, what does it look like? What do we need to follow some other uh, images style? So those are headshots. And you can tell sometimes people just want the quick one. We can make them more, more attractive than just a plain one against the white one, but it's still a short, quick headshot. And there's one image included. They can always buy more, but it's like one image included. And then if I can hear on the phone that they have or I ask them sometimes or do you have a need for more images do you have a position where you sometimes talk to media and uh, are you often uh, written about in the, in the papers do you want to control how you look in the papers oh my god when I ask them that they'd be like yes because <laughs> usually you know today when the when the magazine the papers have a, a, a pretty strange uh, you know economy they are uh, struggling with you know um, economy they don't usually have like the big photography staff that they used to have when they you can really rely that a professional photographer came out with a reporter and did a pretty decent picture of you no the reporter actually pulls up her or his mobile phone and take your pictures and it's like wide angle, nose is getting big, you know, you get all, you know, messy and like that. So many people have experienced sort of bad images that has been, you know, published. And if I ask them, I says, do you have a need for more than one image? Do you have a need for different kind of images? And they says, well, I actually do. There could be CEOs 
that want to be very strict in some images. They can be casual in one. They want to be, sometimes they want to talk about good news and then they want to be happy and it's like, yay, and sort of casual. And they want to be, you know, talking about problems and they can't be too happy. So if they have those needs, I am here to help them with that. And then I tell them, I have this amazing photo shoot that we call personal branding. And then it's the same layup as I have for the fine art. You come in, we have a consultation, we go through the color schemes, we look at maybe your website, if there's a, a self-employed or the company's website, we talk about colors and what kind of clothing and what kind of expressions, what, do you, what kind of uh, message do you need to convey in your images? And then I bring in a stylist, makeup and hair is included, and they have up to five clothing changes. They're here for three, four hours. And in that package, I give them three digital images. And my thing is what I do with the personal branding is kind of sneaky is I tell them, well, since you're here, why don't you bring some private clothes as well? Why don't you take that dress you always been photo want to be photographed in? Or maybe you should just do some lingerie if you're up to it, you know, and I sort of tell them that a little bit of part of this branding, we can do some personal stuff. And what do you know? They come in for the viewing session and I sell them a 20 image image box, windows, lovely. And then they have gotten that on top of their, uh, you know, business package. So it's, it's a, it's a, I love personal branding sessions. It's awesome. So Martina, I'm going to ask a very unfair question because Ron has asked a question. So let me just deep dive into yeah, that a little sure. bit. So, so let's say you get a hundred inquiries for headshots, right? Uh -huh. How many would you expect to, and I hate using the word set as well, but to um, upgrade, let's call it an upgrade, people to the um, branding session? Roughly how many off the top of your head would you say? About a hundred inquiries, I think I would maybe get 10%. 10%. To be honest, okay. yeah. 15 yeah. at the best. Um, there, it is quite an investment and um, they they are not prepared for it. They, it's not, it's, it's still kind of new. Uh, I'm actually having my mind now, I'm gonna add an extra Instagram account for myself to push the personal branding. Uh, okay. I haven't done that yet. I've just been selling it when they asked for. So for me, it's just haven't been marketing, uh, marketed, marketed. Well, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> I haven't been marketing as, as good as I should have. So uh, give me a couple of years and then come back and ask that question later. All right. And I'm curious then about how many of your clients, you know, who go through the headshots or the personal branding will will we'll come in then to do the, you know, the classical or the fine art portrait of the whole family. That is, uh, 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 I would say, I have a, a, probably at least 20% crossover. Uh, there is, and, and the other way around as well. Okay. Uh, which is awesome. I love it. I have so many crossover clients. Um, so yeah, if it's not 20, yeah, probably 20%. It's crossover. So, so can you tell us how you go about that? How, how, let's take one example, right? So let's say we're going to, which one would you prefer to deal with? The going fine art classical to the branding or vice versa? Vice versa. I, okay. I, I, would, I would actually do this. Sometimes I have people coming in for just the classic headshots and we connect and we have fun and it's, it's a short fun session and he's happy or she and walks out. And in my studio, I only show fine art images. And I also have a shelf as you walk out. That's my bragging shelf with a lot of awards on it. And it's a conversation piece. And they say, wow, oh, you, you won uh, quite a, some awards. And I go, yes, oh yeah, I love this. Um, it's a part of my business, the other business that I do when I do fine art portraits and I compete in portraits and it's usually fine art. And have you seen my Instagram? And they go, no. And I say, so this is what I do. And I just take it up and I show them if, or if they talk about it, an image that's on the wall or whatever. And I said, this is my Instagram. I go, wow. And I go say, maybe this is something for your family. 
maybe you want to consider that, you know, and then we, we laugh and we joke. And if there's a lady and she says, oh, this was so much fun. I love being in the front of the camera. If we did her business headshots or her branding shot, shots. And I says, well, have you ever considered doing a, a fine art session? That way you can do more privately and we can do this and this and that. And they go, I would love to, or maybe, oh, I think about it. And you know, like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> they walk out the door. <laughs> but I, I, I talk about it um leisurely you know very you know relaxed and I, I really don't want to be pushy but they ask me about oh what is this if there is a fine art image he goes oh this is great and I go oh that's what I do with my portraits and then the conversation is up and running excellent so just talk to us then about the fine art portrait sales process so you already talked about there's a consultation hopefully in person, if not on Zoom, and then they come for the experience. What happens next? Well, um, uh, after the shoot, we do have them in for a viewing session. And I have started lately to make sure that I also say, and also in writing, welcome to your viewing slash ordering session. So they are aware that this is where the ordering of your images, if you would like some images is taking place. Um, and I make sure that they have, they are uh, aware of my pricing. And um, I sometimes fail a little bit if it's like, a, 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 if I don't have enough time to talk to my clients, if it's like a, a booking that comes up real quick and then we shoot, then I maybe sometimes miss it, but I, I really want to educate them on the pricing along the way. And uh, when I do that, and when they have read and understood, and we talked about it, and I try not to avoid the prices, because I want it to be as clear as possible. And has, it has taken me some practicing, because before I, I, I started with that, I thought I, I was kind of uncomfortable uh, mentioning, well, this package cost this and this cost that. And then I was like, almost real quick, just like giving them um, uh, some, some rebates or whatever before they even asked because I was so uncomfortable with the pricing. <laughs> so I was like, but you can, you know, I can always throw in a couple extra. You don't have to, you know, it's like now I learn how to just be quiet. So I tell them, oh, this is amazing. This is my bestseller, whatever. So they usually, we talk about images and products at the shoot and sometimes already at the consultation. So I, I said, have you felt this? And now we're talking about image boxes or a beautiful frame or whatever I have. And uh, I said, this is my most popular product. And um, I just started selling these and I'm so in love with them. I love this. And if you love many of your images, this is a great way to go. And so they so I said, just plant that in their heads. And then they come back for the viewing session. And I have prepared um, when I do, when, okay, let me say fine art. Okay. So when I do fine art during the session, when they're in makeup, uh, when I'm photographing them, I'll take some short behind the scenes videos and uh, I'll shoot them um, with the makeup artist or when they get ready, or if they, if I give them a glass of bubbly, when they, I say, go and take that glass and say, I'm just going to test the lights. And then I'll take the camera, I mean, the mobile phone and I shoot them and I usually joke a little bit so I can get that laugh and smile and a little bit of, of connection, a little bit of action going on. So it's not just like somebody standing still and I'm taking pictures. So I'm joking around a little bit. I get that, yeah. Just like the other day, it was good music and we were standing like, oh yeah. And I was, I could see my film was like this <laughs> because I was dancing with her, but she was dancing and I was like, I don't care. It's gonna be fun anyway. So when I present, the series of images to my clients at the viewing session, I make this little quick reel of pictures and I put my behind the scenes like in black and white. And then um, I make sure that I, I first show the in chronological order. So where they put the makeup on and then we do the first test. And then I show those images, not all of them, in those, uh, that little reel, I might put 30, 40 images 
and I actually edited maybe two, three of them. So I have not perfectly edited them, but at least showing some fine art edit on some of the images. But I just mixed that up with unedited images as far as on this reel. So they see some behind the scenes shot and then bam, 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 a few images from that clothing change. And then another behind the scenes sweep, you know, with the camera, maybe a laugh. And then we have bum, 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 these images. And at the end, and of course, I put some great music to it. Music, you have to have music. And then at so, the end, most people just like, oh, this is, oh. <laughs> especially moms, <laughs> sometimes the dads too. So I think, Martina, that, that, that's, I think what you're doing there is you're allowing them before they look at the images to pick what they want to invest in. You're getting them to relive that amazing experience they had in the photo shoot. Would that be right? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is a reminder because it could be um, some. I'm trying to shorten this this time, but for me, being by myself, running everything, um, I sometimes have at least three weeks, maybe four, sometimes before they are back in here. Oh, I should really shorten that time, but that's that's the reality right now. And just like you said, when I get that video going, they do connect with the feelings they had that day, and they get in an emotional stage where they are not just excited, but they have a warm feeling about seeing those images. And for me, it's, it's not, it, of course, it's a selling, it's a selling technique because I get them emotional over their images, but I get emotional too. I sometimes sit there, I have tears in my eyes because I think it's, oh, this is <laughs> This is a good reel. This is a good video. <laughs> you know, I tell my husband sometimes when I made it, I walk out my bedroom and I go, this is going to be so good. I'm in tears. <laughs> so I, I love it just as much as the clients because I do, you know, we just, it just wraps it up real good. And then when we're done with the video and I says, how does that feel? And they're like, oh, this is exciting. Not all people are crying, but people are get excited. And I says, I can't wait to see. And I get, okay. So now we're going to go through all of them and sometimes I have quite a few but we're going to go through all of them one by one kind of quickly so you get to see the whole span then we're going to back up and I want you to tell me um what you think about what what you're interested in in what kind of products or what do, what do you have plans is it wall art are we doing image boxes what are your thoughts so let's just go through the images first so I I am very much in control uh, over the session and when we have gone through, let's say 60, 80 images, and I can see sometimes the client goes, how am I supposed to choose? They get almost overwhelmed. And I says, I'm gonna handle this. I'm gonna take care of you and we have a process. So just trust the process and I'm gonna get you through this. And then I explain for them. Now we're gonna start you know, picking out the favorites. And after that, we can go through them one or two times extra. And then we, we come down to an, a, a decent amount. And I will let you know if there are two images that are looking a little bit too much the same, we will make a tough choice which one is to go. So I'm trying to be very honest and very true to my client to not like thinking, haha, they bought two of those. They look almost the same. I another a few hundred, you know, in my pocket. No, I want them to have a really lovely series. So they go home and they are happy. And um yeah, and then at the end, it's sometimes they are really struggling to, to to for the cost, and they have to really get down to a smaller uh, package, and that's okay. It's okay because I just at the end, I want them to be happy, and I have priced my packages now, so I'm I'm fine with the smallest package. If you walk away with two images. I'm still okay. I have invested, maybe I didn't get a, a, a lot of winnings, but it's still, I'm, I invested enough, you know, time and the, the investment from them is good enough for me to be happy, even if it's a small package. So Martina, even if it's fine art, right? I think what you've said to us is you don't do the full retouching fine art process on every image or do you? No. No. Okay. Can you just I, talk to us a little bit about that? 
Yeah. Uh, no, because I have a problem. Uh, I cannot, I do have a problem. I have many problems. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I cannot get down to like 20 or 30 images. Oh my God, it's just impossible. The calling for me, uh, calling the images, it is probably the, the, the toughest process. And then people say, so, well, you can just uh, outsource that. I go, no, no, no. Because I know my clients. I know what kind of images they probably like. So I want to be in charge of that process and it takes time. So I have decided that I'm just going to allow myself to show a little bit more because um, calling takes too much time if I'm going to sit there and get down to 20, 30. So um, I'm, I'm, um, so when I have that amount, I cannot edit all of them because they might buy 10 and my edits do take some time. I mean, I can do a client fine art. If, if I don't have any problems like major skin problems or swapping heads or something else that I need to do, if it's a kind of a, a good shoot technically, um, I maybe have an hour at least 45 for, for an fine art image for a client. So when I do my boxes, you know, there's quite a few hours I put in for 10 and 20 yes. minutes. So I'll do a couple, two, three. And um, that way, I also have a, a conversation start regarding how much edit they want, they really want. And so I push my images kind of all the way, uh, the ones I show that are edited. And then I says, do you like this this far? Or do you want me to go like halfway, you know, sort of stuff. so they can see sometimes on these images they're edited, they see the first one unedited, and then they see like halfway through, and then they see the final one. And then I can ask them and most most of them says like, oh, we want it all. But some are just like, nah, maybe a little bit more natural. I go, okay, fine. That way I can still be a fine art feeling to it, but I don't have to go all the way. Yes. Yes, because it, it, you said at the very beginning, you know, it's about the business, you know, and you realize how important the business piece and a lot of a lot of photographers feel that they have to have everything perfect before they can show it to the client, right, finished and everything else. But you've you've discovered both with your business hat, your creative hat and um, to be able to get overcome that challenge, right, that you can marry both your creative desire with the business reality. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm doing that. So I, I, I love that. So the question that everyone always hates, but we need to talk about it, is how do you handle the consumer requirement to at least invest with you to have files for social media? Do you say no, they're not available at all? Are they available in certain circumstances? Or how do you approach that? Well, I actually include my files at this time. At this stage, okay. I'm having a conversation with a, a great friend of mine that's an excellent photographer, and she's a really good businesswoman, and she tells me not to. So <laughs> we're having a discussion right now. Uh, what am I going to do? I, I held on to these files for so many years. I really did. I was adamant about not getting my files. I Because I came from negative. I came from the analog world. And who would give out the negative? No, 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 no. And it's my it's my art and it's my name on it and so on and so far. And uh, I just relaxed a little bit about that in the last years, especially since I raised my prices. I'm getting my money worth. Is that how you can say it? Can you say that? Yes. So where if, I if they bought these amazing products, they know what an amazing product looks like. And they only get the files of the products they buy. And I have stopped sending out digital proofs or, or previews with logos on it and everything. Nothing goes out of here until they buy it. And that was the major difference that I did in 2021. And it was really hard for me. And so many old clients came back. Oh, we used to get like a little CD with some images. And one time I gave them super small because I didn't want to be bothered with small printing when they came in and order can I just buy it you know 10 by 15 centimeters for my grandma and I'd be like oh I'm gonna price that well now I just gotten the courage to I say well it costs as much as a 20 by 25 so 
you know, it's up to you if you want it. But if you buy the 20 by 25, you get it in a, in a nice mount and you get the digital file. That way you can mass produce it to grandma. And I was like, I cannot control the universe. And if they go to a, a, a pretty bad lab and they produce these little small ones to grandma, they still have an amazing image for me. So they can see the difference. That's how I relaxed about giving out the, the digital files. But it took okay. me many, many years. And so you sell then, when I buy something in print, you sell a, a file where they can print from as well as a social media size file? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But right okay. now, okay. they get both. Okay. Might and, be changing in the future if my girlfriend has a say in this. <laughs> And the discussion with your girlfriend, is she saying no digitals whatsoever? Yeah, or? no, she's she's selling them. She sells them okay. as an add-on. And that's okay. what we're going to discuss. Okay. Uh, we are in the middle of uh, discussing a little bit about revamping the business further. So that is a, a hot topic right now. What am I going to do okay. in the future? So, so it's, not, it's not that they're not for sale at all, right? Nope. It's just how you sell them. Yeah. Okay. And that Excellent. comes, uh, that as well comes with... Um, hopefully attaching a product to it that's how i want it to, because i am so product focused i want it to be in their hands or on the walls um yes. i've been in business for so many years and i tell you that i meet not anymore not since i stopped sending out previews with logos on it or or doing ga online galleries when i stopped all of that i have a hundred percent ditch buy rate 100% of my client buy. And that was not the case before. So many people came in, they did their shoot. I sent them a USB with previews, with logos right over it. They, first of all, they posted that, you know, unedited, logo straight over it, and they didn't care. They were so happy, or they just didn't do anything about it. Even if I sent some emails out and go, oh, we're having a special this month, come in and, and you know, uh, do those products that you always want to order you get this and this for that and people still didn't show up because life happens you, you you put that usb and also another thing is when you have a lot of images that i usually do to show them it gets overwhelming just like i see my people here on the couch when they have seen the video or they see gone through the images it goes how am i going to choose choose and then imagine them being in their house and they look at all these images going, oh, my God, how am I going to choose? Then I'm not there holding their hands, giving them the process to come down to a series of images that are wonderful. So taking that away, change my business. Seriously. So, Martina, I can't believe that hour has flown. What? Thank you. Are you serious? Yeah, <gasps> it's just it's just disappeared. <laughs> we have we've a lot of people asking in the in the questions. How do we get more of you? Um, and I know you do have an offering for photographers, where we've had questions about lighting and posing and a whole other questions in there. So we normally at these conversations try to keep it very much on the business track. Sure. But I have shared, guys. We've shared a link to Martina's website that you can go and have a look at her work, that you can go and click on that for photographers button and connect directly with Martina. Um, so thank you so much for sharing. Congratulations on the amazing business you have created. You. And I love the way you have merged your creativity and turned it into a business, right? Because that's how we, as an industry, amplify the difference our work makes to our clients is we have to be able to merge those two which often competing things that creativity with the business side to make a real difference to people's lives it, it is it is so thank you so much and um, thank you for joining us from from sweden i would never have guessed that english is not your first language no. you did am you're amazing you were amazing it puts it puts all of us in shame, you know, that, no. that uh, it really does. It really it's does. Those early years in California, you know. OK. <laughs> OK. Well, thank you so much. Martina. Thank you. And um, thank you for sharing. I know everyone has really enjoyed it. So stay, stay safe, stay healthy, everybody. And we'll see you again soon. Looking Bye forward for to see you again. Bye.